Hi guys, in today's video, I'm going to cover the top five mistakes that investors make when investing in the stock market. If you're a beginner or someone who is relatively new to investing, then this video will benefit you and change the way you look at stocks and the market in general. If you gain some value out of today's video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel below. The first mistake that investors make is worrying about stock price movements in the short term. The general goal of a stock investor is that if you invest in individual stocks, the purpose of this is to eventually outperform the broader market, such as the S&P 500 index, over a 10 year, 20 year, or even over the investor's lifetime. And the S&P 500 index tracks the performance of the 500 largest companies in the United States. And these companies include companies such as Apple, Coca-Cola, and Walmart, since they are very large in nature. Some of those companies will perform poorly over that time horizon, and some will perform extremely well, and the index tracks the average performance of all the companies that it holds. When you are investing into an individual company, you are really investing into the company's CEO, the managers, and the employees who are running the company. And if the company is performing well over a long period of time, this usually means that the executives, the management, and the employees are running the company really well, and this will be reflected in the stock price, and the opposite will happen if the company is being run poorly. However, if you compare your company's performance over the index over a short time horizon, say anywhere within a week, or a month, six months, or even over a year, that's not really enough time to really tell if it will outperform the market. This is because the total price of the company and the true underlying value of that company isn't likely to be aligned in the short term. And this is due to the nature of the market with global participants ranging from hedge fund managers, portfolio managers, and individual investors from around the world. The second mistake investors can make is investing in an IPO, which is short for initial public offering. New investors can get extremely excited when an IPO gets released to the public. This is because when a private company first sells shares to the public, the company's management files a prospectus. And the prospectus usually highlights all the positives about the company in order to generate excitement and hype around the company in order to acquire new investors. In other words, free capital. If you're new to investing in stocks, it can be very easy for you to fall for the hype when it comes down to a new IPO that's been released to the market. And a lot of times an IPO gets released to the public during a bull period or when there are a lot of hype, when there's a lot of hype and speculation around stocks. Such as the peak of 2021 with 1,035 new IPOs being issued to the public. And if you compare that to the number of companies that was released to the public in 2009 during the financial crisis or even 2020, and 2022, you can see that new issues usually gets sent out to the public during times of a bull run. And funny enough, companies such as Airbnb and DoorDash was offered to the public in December of 2021, right at the peak of the bull market when investors would have paid the highest price for their securities. And this is usually done on purpose. However, the real reason you don't invest in an IPO is because you simply don't have enough information about the company over a long time horizon to see how that business and how the management has dealt with periods of financial uncertainty, such as the 2008-2009 crisis or the 2000-2001 dot-com bubble era. So if you invest in companies that has been issued to the public over 20 to 30 years, you can see how that company has tracked and has performed, sorry, over, the long, over a long time horizon. And this will give you a better indication on how the company will be able to handle itself during the next financial crisis, which is really, really important because at the end of the day, those things will occur again in the future. And if you just invest into an IPO that is based on a lot of hype with no long-term evidence, then it will be extremely likely that you have invested in a speculative stock with no real growth prospects. The third mistake investors make is setting unrealistic goals. 
We hear a lot of stories about how investors get rich investing in big, um, Bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies and Tesla simply because of the hype around Elon Musk. And there are very few get rich quick stories out there, but you never hear the stories of people who have lost it all because they have fallen for the hype. You may hear some testimonial stories of people who have doubled their money in a day, a week, or a month, or whatever, and sometimes this may happen. I mean, you can bet on the right horse and double your money in five minutes if you happen to make the right bet, but the real question is, is, is this really sustainable over the long term, and are you able to do that consistently? I doubt that can be managed and sustained over the long term and if you're investing into a new stock or crypto or whatever based around a lot of hype around it or trying to generate a real quick return over the next week or so, then that is not investing and that is simply speculating and you're better off just going to the casino and playing on the roulette table since the odds of you doubling your money will be roughly the same. The fourth mistake is buying a stock simply for its dividend. A lot of investors invest in dividend stocks because they want to seek passive income and seek out investments of companies with a high dividend yield. A dividend yield is a financial ratio that measures how much dividend the company pays in relation to the stock price. This is done by taking the dividend payments per share and dividing it by the stock price. If a dividend yield is high because of a falling stock price, you need to assess whether this is a healthy company or is it a company that could potentially be on the edge of bankruptcy. And pay attention to the dividend payout ratio. This is a ratio of the total amount of dividends paid to the shareholders in relation to the company's net income. This is calculated by dividing the dividend paid out to shareholders by the company's net income. If the dividend payout ratio was high, this means that the company isn't reinvesting the money back into the business or isn't retaining the company's earnings for potential reinvestment. And if the competitors in the same industry are doing that, then eventually the company can lose market share and lose a lot of growth opportunities, which will eventually cost the shareholders. You are better off investing in companies with a lot of growth prospects and once the business matures, you will eventually receive a very healthy dividend as the years go by. The fifth and final mistake that investors make in today's video is day trading in the market. There really shouldn't be any reason to buy and sell stocks several times a day, a week, or even a month since those costs can really add up over time. If you invest $10,000 and each brokerage fee charges you 1% and you made 10 trades for that year and earn 10% for the year, you've essentially broken even. Another way to put it is if you invest $1,000 and each brokerage fee is $10, that will cost you 1%. So if you earn 10% for the year and you also made 10 trades, you have essentially earned nothing at all. Brokerage fees really do add up and you'll notice that when you sign up with any online broker, you'll essentially receive an influx of emails encouraging you to trade in the market and buy or sell this stock because they get paid based off your commission. They want you to be an active trader in the market because the more you buy and sell, the more commission your broker will earn and they will keep earning money regardless of whether you make or lose money. So keep that in mind when you make a brokerage account or if you already do have an online brokerage account that when you receive an influx of emails, do they really have your best interest at heart or do they just simply want you to buy and sell stocks so they can earn more commission? So always keep that in mind and that's a wrap up for today's video. If you gained some value, please leave a like and subscribe below and I'll chat to you soon.